Hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to talk about um, a kind of introduction to message queuing. Um, so I'm not going to go into anything in any great depth, um, but I'm going to talk about message queuing, what it is, um, why you might want to use it, um, and I'm going to touch on some of the solutions that you can use in Intel to do message queuing at the moment. Can everybody hear me? Yes, good. Um, so, so I'm going to push for a load of stuff. Um, if something's interesting, I'm not really enough to explain, then, then please yell at me and throw things. Um, <laughs> and I'll elucidate it. Um, so, quickly starting, what is message queue? Um, so, in its simplest form, a message queue is pretty much a list. Um, and you put things on one end of the list, and you take things off the other end of the list. Um, so, some terms. We would have producers, they are people who shut things off the list, and consumers, they are people who take things off the list. Um, and you have a queue, if you're putting things on the list, faster than you're taking them off, because the little list grows. Um, so, why would I want that? Um, there's a number of reasons. Um, I, the first of which is that you might have um, things like, say, your web servers uh, that want some action to be taken, and you have some action, like putting a background job that takes loads of ground and loads of resources makes the machine crash, um, and you don't want to be running that on your website. You certainly don't want to be running that in the middle of the web price. Um, so let's you manage loads, you know, if 5,000 people are at once, um, asking you to do something very expensive, you can queue up 5,000 requests at once and have two servers work through them as they have a time. Because having two servers trying to do 5,000 things at once is not very efficient. You're going to spend more time context which can actually work. Um, so, yeah, in, in web environments and that, I'm guessing people are correct about this, I mostly end up doing web stuff. Um, it lets you set more pages faster to people. Um, and speed is very, very important. Um, so, talking about web apps. Um, the problem with web apps is that, well, application servers take a lot of RAM. Um, they're generally not small. As I said, context switch is very expensive. But most apps, uh, and even kind of modern apps, um, are kind of designed more like a CDR. Um, you, you have a pill interpreter, and it gets a request, it does some processing, and it generates a page, and it sends that back to the user, and you take a full pill interpreter for every request. Um, and, and how many copies of pill with all your stuff can you fit in around once? And the answer is not that many. I mean, yeah, maybe a couple of hundred on a bit of that machine, but, but still. Um, okay, um, so making the user way is horrible. I mean, I'm sure that everybody's seen research from Google and other places um, that you know, show a very small increase um, in time it takes to search people's pages um, means you get a big decrease in the amount of pages that people will look at. Um, so, in most of them, want to give people pages as fast as possible. Um, to go into a little bit more depth, um, it, this is one of my favorite diagrams. Um, if you have one CPU doing two jobs, you're actually better doing job one and then doing job two, um, rather than doing a bit of A and a bit of B and a bit of A, um, as shown in the diagram, because in the bottom of the case, um, one of your users gets the page half time and one of your users gets the page in full time. In, in the other case, um, you spend seven eighths of the time before giving anyone anything, which um, I mean, this, this assumes that you're not IA bound, and a lot of time you spend waiting on database. So you need to be running more than one process per CPU. But you don't want um, 200 requests trying to execute at once on the CPU because you will spend more time on it. Um, and one of my industry applications I have in production um, that, that does kind of very, very little actual um, IO workload, um, I, I've run. 1.2 processes per CPU on the machine. Um, and it has to have six work processes on a full CPU machine, and that is the most efficient. Um, going to 10 work processes takes 10% of the efficiency away. Uh, just that's 10% you know, less work is happening because I'm content switching. So that's, yeah, you don't want content switching, it's expensive. Um, so, what, is, what are the solutions to make web pages go really fast? Um, Use a page assembly layout of some sort, uh, which I'm not going to talk about at all here. Um, defer the work inside the webcast. As I said, you want to give people pages as fast as you possibly can, um, which means that you know, stop in to make TCP connections with email, serve and send mail, or you know, fiddling with things on the phone. Anything that you can not do in your webcast, don't do it in the webcast. 
Um, this is really, really, really becoming more and more important as we do more and more Ajax things. So actually, each person asking for a web page probably does three or four or five or six or you know a large number of requests on the back end server. Um, and in fact, if you can make your request tie in really, really fast, um, and you can split your, your work up like that, um, you can find that serving someone something that takes four requests it is better and quicker for them, um, response-wise, than, than generating a giant page to start with that only takes one request, or is slow. Um, <coughs> so, um, message queuing has lots and lots of flavors, lots of things call a message queue. I mean, cover things that are kind of relevant to Perl. Um, so, let's talk about messaging in general. Um, so, again, the term that is messaging topologies. <coughs> so, metaduce sequences. How metaduce sequences interact through the message program. Um, and generally, in a messaging system, you have something sat in the middle. Um, that does the queuing, holds the messages, uh, and lets your actually lets them flow through. Um, so uh, there are three really common patterns you want to do. I'm going to talk about all of these. Um, and even within those, um, there's a lot more complexity because you can have things like durable messages, which make sure it gets to the disk, or non-durable messages, which you just store in RAM. Um, durable messages are obviously much, much slower because every message is going to get into the disk. Um, so this can get complex, but the, the three examples you're likely to come across or are likely to be able to think of an immediate use for. Um, Public subscribe. Um, so this is what ActiveMQ calls a topic. It's what MQP is an RMS queue. You have people publishing messages, some people reading messages, um, and every consumer gets every message. So, so this is basically broadcast. And uh, if nobody's listening, yeah, it's like me talking to you. I, I, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, and you're all listening. But if there's nobody here, I'd be talking and no one would be listening. This is public subscribe right here. Um, Okay, so actual queues, um, what you think of as a kind of work queue, um, you have one of producers, one of consumers, each message goes to exactly one consumer. Um, that, that's kind of like you know, you're giving out everybody um, their homework, uh, and you need to get individual homework, um, and, and if I've got more things that need to be doing than there are people to give it out to, I, I just hold on to them until you come back and say, right, I'm free now, I'd like to do some more work. Um, so, as I was saying before, if, if 5,000 people come and ask for something really expensive um, in 30 seconds, well, you can just start doing them, you can give a personal request and start working through um, the work gradually. Um, and a lot of web environments, you see, you get these giant load spikes that are very, very short lasting. Um, you know, so you get 5,000 requests and then a very background request level for you know, the next half hour. Um, and if you're not careful, these 5,000 choice of ones will make your server crack itself. Um, uh, whereas you could have actually been doing useful work instead. Um, okay, so third one, request response. This, this is kind of more complicated. Um, but what you, what you generally want, um, I, I mean, say, <coughs> again, you're in a web page and you want to ask someone to do something for you, um, like, please go and resize this image. Um, and tell me the URI for the image that I can get back, but if you don't complete it within half a second, then I can. Um, yeah, as an example. Um, so, so the way you do this is that you publish your messages for a well-known place and, and have um, workers um, consuming them and working on them. Uh, and inside your message, you put a kind of reply to address. And so when the work, when the work is complete, um, the information about what has been done gets sent back to that reply to address, um, and you arrange your message queue um, to, to be the empty room scenario. And if, if you're no longer listening, you've left the room, and it, it, this person who's been working goes, I'm done, here are results, and nobody's here and listening. Um, <coughs> so between these three patterns, uh, they, they kind of cover a lot of what you want to do. Um, and if, oh my god. Um, <laughs> Okay, so very quickly go on to um, messaging. Stop um, is well known. So text oriented message protocol. It's very simple. Um, there's a client for it called Stop. Very simple semantics. Um, it can do those three patterns. 
Um, you're going to end up using the Apache server probably. Um, yeah, so Zach MQ, um, which is the Apache um, Java server, um, Java for all for its amazingly great stack traces. Um, and you get two types of things. You get topics and queues. And topic is on my public subscribe. Um, and queues are my um, actual queue of work. Um, topics are fine, because if nobody's listening, then you get thrown this away. Queues you need kind of careful with. If you're closing your queues, then you need monitoring and etc. because queues can fill up. And, and if you give your messaging server a million messages, or a million messages are a meg big each, well, yeah, you're going to have some problems. Um, so, MQP. Um, it's the alternative. It's kind of a lot more complicated. Um, and so you have this whole mess of wiring thing rather than just topics and queues. Um, and all of your clients kind of say to the server, right, I want you to set up this message routine for me. Um, which means that if your server crashes and dies, um, then, then you can just start a new server and everything's going to rebuild itself. You don't carry configuration. Um, so, MQT, you have a publisher and then an exchange and queue. It, it separates these things within the queue server and then a consumer. Um, so, an exchange is, is like a different thing. It's named, you know, it has a number, you, you send messages to it. Um, queues, um, you have one or more queues. Um, they can be named, they can be anonymous, um, and those queues get bound to one or more exchanges. So, if you send a message to an exchange and nothing's listening, it gets thrown away. If you send a message to an exchange and there are two queues bound with, each of those queues gets copied the message. So you end up with one copy in each queue. Um, so, um, each message is never looking up to more than one client. Um, you duplicate the message at the point where it goes from the exchange to the queue. Um, well, but yeah, each message wants to send a queue is only looking up to one client. Um, so, this joint thing is called binding. Um, and actually, it can get pretty complicated here um, because you can take a queue and one or more exchanges and bind one or more times. Um, so you can have a queue that listens to various things on various exchanges selectively. Um, so that's looking at more interesting and complicated topologies. It's all here, you can do it all. Um, okay, so how's the job queue? Uh, you have an exchange, uh, you have one queue down to it, both of them systems. You publish some messages that go into one queue, you have a load of people pulling those messages off um, so they get down Um You're probably subscribed, you have a named exchange, and then every client that connects makes its own anonymous queue, and so every client has a copy of the message, and um, you ask for, if there's no clients, there are no queues attached, and you make sure that when your client disconnects, um, its queue gets abolished. Um, so you can have multiple listeners all listening to the same thing. Um, and they can all listen and absorb messages at their own rate. Um, and then, um, so, as I was saying, the AMQ is complicated. Um, I'm not going to go into any of this. Um, you can do a lot of complex things. So, um, may convince you that I want to queue. Um, so, so, how do I do it? Um, there's some really stupid approaches. Um, then there's some queuing only approaches and some more um, complicated stuff. So, um, I share a database table. Let's, let's have a database table with a status <laughs> in it. Um, and and, and uh, <coughs> he will, he will, I shit you not. My SQL, do not lose his money, especially. Um, yeah, he will just do it totally wrong and, 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 and will cry and lose. Um, Okay, so let's have three database tables. One for jobs that I've got to do, one for jobs that I'm doing, and one for jobs that I've done. This is still shit, but less shit. Um, okay, um, if you just want to run jobs uh, and you have no <coughs> clients, use GitHub. Um, it's there, it's on CPAN, it's been around for ages. Um, it's not big or smart or clever, but it works. Um, if you need assistance, then, then uh, as in, so if your messaging server crashes, um, or your job server crashes, then when, when you restart it, you get all the jobs back rather than having lost. Then there's the Schwartz, um, which I'm told works. I haven't tried using it myself. Um, it relies on the MySQL database, um, so, so, so you have a single point of failure. Um, but again, it's still simple. You can just go and install it from CPAP. Um, so, so if you just want to run jobs, probably want to use 
use all these things. You got? Yeah, you got. You can work with several databases. I guess that. All right, you need to, you maybe it has more specific points there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so if you want to, if you want to be a little lower level and do some queuing yourself, um, then next stop, um, talks of Apache App then queue, it's dead simple, um, the pod is, it works perfectly well for sending messages from web apps, it works perfectly well, you can write a script that then consumes messages and does work, etc. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Um, the, the newer alternative, um, is NetRabbit Foot, um, which is not a stop the same PP and it talks to IRF MQ and it gives you all of those kind of um, more complicated, nice properties of AMQP you can get out of it. However, it's non blocking. Um, unless your software is non blocking, then that can be interesting. Um, that said, you can load and use this um, in a web app and, and do it in a blocking way, and there is um, a couple of calls on. on the rabbit MQ objects to be able to say, mentally flush everything out of block until you've done that because I went added that um, because I, I, in my web apps I'm just kind of sending messages and uh, I don't care if I could wait for a little while to make sure the message is sent. Um, and, and yeah, it works fine. Um, so, we have this message being stuff, we have a load of scripts that consume messages and doing stuff, and, and you just need to duplicate a load of code, and you need the same way to kind of organize this. So, Sol Nutter um, decided that using Catalyst to do this would be a great idea. Um, and some Double Nutter helped him, uh, and someone who's Triple Nutter is now maintaining this. Um, Ray, I'm rubbish. Um, yeah, probably. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> and, and, yeah, no, I mean, if you want to build um, something listening to Storm doing work, um, then have a look at the sending Storm. It's kind of a nice way to arrange your code. Or it, it lets you arrange your code in a catalyst way, which maybe isn't nice, but most of the time you're familiar with it. Um, and it makes it easy to test in a second. NetApp and MQ, Chisel talks about this at Yapsi, and the code still isn't on GitHub. If there are any ethical people here, <coughs> okay. um, what are you so, um, Red Pippi um, is this awesome thing that I found. I was like, I really love these jobs, and I love people to be able to see what these jobs are doing and stuff. Um, and and um, yeah, it's really pretty cool. It needs to be async. Um, so you can't do database requests, and, and it's, it's kind of yeah, kind of interesting. Um, it does play really nicely with Red MQ and um, NetRabbit Foot. Um, with most of the storage serializing things in JSON and then um, juice storage unserializing with JavaScript. Then you can do some really nice stuff. See my second talk. Um, yeah, this, this is the thing that I foolishly wrote. Um, and so it runs jobs and it lets you get to asynchronous pipes for job, uh, job status. So you can give all your users these little nice progress bars of what the things are doing in, in their web app. Um, and yeah, I'll be talking about it later. Um, okay, I'm done. Um, some quick conclusions. Use JSON for your message payloads. It, it's, it's nice, it interoperates, it, it means you can pass messages to Ruby or Python or you know, anything else um, much more easily than if you use something else for it. Um, if you get away with using the amount of it and do that, it's, it's almost certainly the simplest solution. Um, Stomp works well, um, other than the fact that it involves Java and Massive Stack Traces. Um, AMQP is nicer, but then Rabbit for the Erlang, which involves Massive Stack Traces. Um, but there are less proven solutions in Perl. Um, so, so I've been playing a lot of AMQP stuff. Um, if you just want something that works, the AMQP is maybe a little cutting edge. Um, okay, I'm done with questions.